Am I responsible for the pizza, Tracy? Well, there you go. See? This is an important thing for me to know. I am responsible for pizza. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, well, yeah, because really it is all about me, isn't it? Quite. quite. Um, thank you, Gary. And that's why I love you. And that's why we're buds. Because he gets me. Um, uh, I did ask Michael to preach this morning. I was, I was in Washington for work uh, this past week, and I knew that was going to be busy. Um, uh, as many of you know, Michael received his license for the United Pentecostal Church last month. So he is officially the Reverend Michael Ryan. God help us all. Um, what does that mean? That means he gets to pay money. That's what that means. Um, and he'll also do... We will do combo weddings, if you'd like. He will be young Elvis, I will be fat Elvis, and it'll be fantastic. <laughs> he will look like Elvis when he went on the Ed Sullivan Show. I will look like Elvis before he had that last jelly donut. Um, good times all the way around. Uh, for the church family, weddings are free. That wedding ain't free, because if I'm putting on a job suit, somebody's paying dearly. Uh, so, uh, but we are glad. Uh, you, I bet you would. Uh, the price keeps going up. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> When, when, when Frank and Lacey got married, he goes, would you do it as Elvis? I said, Franklin, my son, you don't have that kind of money. Yeah. So <laughs> I said, um, so, but I, I did ask him to preach this morning. And so if you would get behind him and get behind the word, and uh, if we know anything about Michael's preaching, we're going to beat the Baptist Bonanza this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, am I on? Well, I'm not used to this mic yet. So, I thank my pastor for allowing me to preach this Sunday. Uh, we're going to be speaking from Joshua 6 this morning. Joshua 6 says this, So the people shouted when, they, when the priest blew the trumpets, and it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the walls fell down flat, every man straight before him, and they took the city. I'm going to speak on this topic today, walls falling. This is the Se Seattle Kingdom. It broke ground in November 2nd of 1972 and opened in March 27th of 1976. It hosted baseball games football games, and the occasional basketball game. It opened, it hosted the NBA All-Star Game and three NCAA Final Fours. And for all you rock nerds out there, it also hosted the Rolling Stones, The Who, and a structure like that you would think would stand forever. You'd be wrong. In March 26th of 2000, this happened. look at Jericho. Jericho had a two-tier wall system, very similar to modern bridges where they have an upper wall and a lower wall to catch uh, flood water for the city to uh, kind of sustain itself. The city roughly was nine to ten acres of land, 
it's a very impressive structure for those times. But let's take a look back at the beginning of uh, Joshua chapter 6. Now, Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hands. Its king and the mighty men of valor, you shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go around the city once, and you shall do it for six days. So at this point, Moses is no longer with them. They're kind of stuck in the desert because cowards. Uh, they saw giants. I mean, you know, they only serve a mighty God that can take over, just make a path through a river. But they turned a 10-day journey into a 40-year journey in a desert. That had to be fun. Hot, which we don't need Christmas music yet. Praise the Lord. Can I get an amen? <laughs> but they had been slaves for 430 years, and... As we talked, you know, in June, Dad talked about the story. But it was, it, uh, they've been slaves and had ingrained the mindset it was not easy to leave someplace. And it was not easy to accomplish stuff. So they had to become warriors of, to take a land. Going from slaves to warriors, no small feat, it takes total change of thinking you don't want a slave to be a warrior otherwise they could take you over <laughs> but it continues in joshua and seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram ram's horns before the ark but the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times and the priest shall blow the trumpets and it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horns and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then before the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall go every man straight before him. This is not a particularly good plan, and if I had Gabri, because I forgot to throw the slide in, we'd have the Veggie Tales. We have Slushy in my ear. You're marching around the walls of Jericho, which, as we saw, was very high up. And uh, they had archers at the point and may had their army basically encompassing around that. So, I mean, you're basically an easy shot. Again, slushy in your ear. For one, you, you definitely give up the element of surprise. Uh, there's been a few stories that we've done about that. For another, there is no weapons involved in this plan. How, like we talked on Labor Day, how many times does God's plan make sense to us? Thank you. It never makes any sense to us. But in Isaiah... The Lord addresses this. He says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my way, says the Lord. For as heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. That's the thing about faith. Most of the time it doesn't make sense. Talking about Gideon, well, you have too many men still. I, I don't see how, God, we don't, we have a very small army. Yeah, you still have too many. Yeah, you need about a third of that. Okay. In this story, it's, well, you're going to march. You're not going to have a single weapon. You're going to have horns and trumpets. Well, that makes total sense, God. Please, please direct me on where you're going with this, because it doesn't make a lick of sense to me. But there's a miracle unto itself in the ends of joshua it says it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about dawning of the day 
and they marched around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day only, they marched around the city seven times. And the seventh time it happened when the priest blew the trumpets and Joshua said, Shout for the Lord has given you this city. Everyone got up early in the morning and they started walking around the walls. But this time they did it seven times instead of one. And at the end of the seventh time, the walls fell down. This is a very similar promise that God gave to Moses when they came out of the slavery. In, in Joshua 1, it says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, and you and all his people which I am giving to them, the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, as I said to Moses. Lord tells Joshua the same thing. He said, whatever I've given you, Jericho, now the way I'm going to give it to you is by walking. He told Moses, everywhere you step, I'm going to be, that land's going to be given to you. It doesn't matter who is there, it's yours. Because you are my children. In Deuteronomy, it says, Deuteronomy 32, it says, Had I not feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversities should misunderstand lest they should say, Our hand is high, and it is not the Lord who has done all this. For they are a nation void of counsel, nor is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that the, they would consider at the latter end. How could one, thou, one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to flight, unless their rock had sold them and the Lord had surrendered them. For their rock is not like our rock. One can put away a 1,000, two, 10,000. What God is saying in this, he says, one man can drive a 1,000 enemies away. Two can fly, that's a multiplication of 10 every single time. This church runs 40 every Sunday now. Yeah. That is a thousand, it's 10, three is, so that's to almost the 43rd power. It's a lot of zeros. I'm a math nerd, if you can't tell. But God says, one man can do that, but when you're together, there's another verse in the Bible that says where two and three are gathered together. There is nothing that stands in our way of what this church is going to do. When I was reading Joshua, he's talking about, yeah, you see a big city. You see what defenses they have. But I've already, like I said, Gideon as well. He already saw what they were up against, but it doesn't matter because we have a bigger army that you don't even see what's about to happen. He says, we can drive 10,000 with two. I believe that the walls are about to fall down here in Johnstown. Reason, brother man, I believe the devil is right now trying to slow us down, but we're rolling. We're getting more traction than ever. Brother Man's not here. All right, we got Daniel and Rocky going to do Sunday school now. It doesn't matter. You're not going to slow down what this church has planned, what God has planned for Johnstown. The traction has already started, as Pastor has listed before. You've already started the traction of 
what this church is going to do. You see more and more new faces coming into church, and I love it. Because this church is family-based as we have so many events that are going to be centralized on the families of this church. In Joshua 6.20, what happens is what God said was going to happen. He said, so the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets, and it happened when the people heard the sounds of the trumpets, and the people shouted with a great shout that the walls fell down flat. When the people went up to the city, every man had straight before him, and they took the city. I believe next year, with the fast, with what we have planned, that next year we're going to see walls fall down. We're going to see walls that have not have been up for too long. I believe that in my spirit. Pastor, I believe next year we're going to see more faces in this church than ever before. I believe that in the Holy Spirit. Like it, like they had to bring down the King's Mint Dome. They're going to bring down the walls that are born in the city, that are born in the neighborhood. I believe the walls are going to fall down to our neighbors first, and Johnstown's going to be next. I believe that in the spirit. Pastor. Amen. I believe that. Do you believe that? Give the Lord a hand clap if you believe that. Amen. Um, when I was at conference this year, I uh, went to a session with, with uh, Jerry Jones, who is our, uh, one of the best preachers in our, in our fellowship. And here's what he said, and, and I don't know if, I feel like I went just to Indianapolis to hear this. He said, life will present you with many legitimate ways to lose your purpose. Um, I, my my non-compete with my former employer was up last month. And lo and behold, uh, I have had multiple people go, hey, are you looking to do X, Y, Z? Who doesn't like money? Don't lie. Yeah. Who didn't say who doesn't have money? I said who doesn't <laughs> like money, right? I've told our church before the most important thing you can do is be able to hear the voice of the Lord for yourself, right? Rocky talked about it this morning. I I don't issue a whole lot of edicts for just that reason, because the Holy Ghost will intercede for you about stuff that is for you, not for me, not for your neighbor for you. So I'm on a conversation with a bank trustee. Hey, I'm at a new bank. You're knocking pizza up. You could do this virtually. You can, and I would pay you, let's just say it was a triple digit per hour number. And I'm already doing the math in my head, right? I'm like, yeah, that would be great. Here comes the Holy Ghost. Hate it when that happens. Donnie, you got to keep the main thing the main thing. But I like money. A lot. <laughs> right? But God's getting ready to do something. And I can't be encumbered with all of that and do what the Lord has called me to do. Right? right? I switched jobs a little more than a year ago. Obviously, it's been good for me personally, but I think it's been good for the church too, right? And so, the op Brother Jones thing, is the, the life will present you with many legitimate opportunities, right? Nobody called me and said, hey, can you be a drug mule? That's a joke, Kathy, it's fine. All right, <laughs> Kathy's like, should I laugh at that? Right, this is legit work that I'm good at. Um, I, have, I have another person who's a risk manager who's like, hey, do you want to do expert witness work? Which I charge about twice the three-digit rate to do that. But you got to keep the main thing the main thing. Because if we're not careful, we will find legitimate ways to get out of what the will of God is for us. 
But you, weren't, you know, the, the, devil, the devil was not going to tempt me to go sell cocaine. Because that's not going to tempt me. I'm far too pretty to go to prison. <laughs> right? So dealing coke is not something where I'm like, well, let me think about that. Right? Well, when somebody goes, hey, I want you to use skills that you've honed over years that you're going to be really good at, and I'm going to pay you a lot of money to do it. And the Holy Ghost goes, but can you minister as effectively? Man, we need to be able to hear the voice of the Lord. Because if he is going to do what he said he was going to do, and we heard it this morning, and we believe it, then we need to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. Listen to the Holy Spirit when it goes, talk to this person, reach out to this person. We need to be engaged in the work of the church. This thing that's coming up on the second is a great outreach. Is it going to be fun? Sure. But the main reason to do it is because it's going to put us in touch with our neighbors. Right? The rummage sale was great. The two grand we made was great. The connections we were made was, was the reason we did it. Right? It's so important that we keep the main thing the main thing and that we as a church are able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. You believe that? Amen. Let's stand this morning. You talked this morning about walls coming down. I believe a wall is going to come down in, in many areas. Things that you've prayed about for years, the Lord is going to start in your health, in your finances, in the relationships you've been dealing with. I think God is going to break some chains, yes. right? We've talked about, and I'm not trying to re-preach, but, you know, I got the mic, so there you go, um, right? I preached probably more on giving in 23 than, I, than I've ever preached before, right? And, and I told the church, when I switched jobs, I took a six-figure pay cut. And I was like, uh, well, what's that going to do to the church? Here's what I'll tell you what it's done to the church. At the end of October, we had the amount of giving that we had the whole of 2022. So in November and December, we are living in overflow. Why? Because God blesses faithfulness. Right. Now, so if I go, all right, God, I'm going to go take on this extra work so I can earn extra money. I'm kind of spitting in God's face a little bit, right? Because, okay, I'm going to take a new job because it's going to help me pastor better, take up less time. Boy, I'm worried about money. But we're about 15 to 20% ahead of where we were last year. Who knows that God owns everything anyways, right? He doesn't need my money. He doesn't need your money, right? But he trusts us with it. And so my, my personal giving is about half what it was. And yet the church is, what the church has received is about 15 to 20% higher. Why? Because God is faithful, and if we'll learn to hear him. Now, preach about money this morning. Relax. Hold on to your wallet. You're all good. But if we'll be faithful to him and hear his voice. And I told Charity, I said, I thought about that for a day, and I just felt a real check in the Holy Spirit and said, my peace is not worth any amount of money. Because I know what God has called me to do and what God has in store for this church. And I don't ever want to go, well, you know, I'm going to earn a little more so I can help God out. Like God needs my help. Right? So I would tell you, learn to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. It was, it was, and, it, and, I, and here's the other thing. I promise I'm going to quit preaching. As, at 1.30, that's when, <laughs> as soon as I went, okay, you ever do that? And that peace, yeah. the Bible talks about the peace that passes understanding. When you go, you've heard the voice of the Holy Spirit, and you go, okay. And I called Charity, and I said, you know, I'm not going to do that. Here's why. And just the peace 
of knowing that you've heard the voice of the Lord and you've surrendered yourself to his will. Isn't that something? We've got... Go deeper. Go more. Yep. Keep all in. The Bible says when a servant's done everything the master's asked of him, he is still unprofitable. Well, that sounds kind of weak sauce, right? If you do everything that's asked of you, then you haven't gone above and beyond, right? I'm just doing, doing the bare minimum. And the Lord is calling us and goes, can I take you deeper? You can say no, Right? And, but you, you check the move of the Holy Spirit in your life. You check the, right? How many knows that you go deeper, you're unlocking the miraculous. And incredible things will happen. But you've got to go deeper. Amen? All right, I'm done preaching. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you today. We thank you for your word, for your spirit. God, we believe you're going to do greater things than these, exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Lord, I thank you for the spirit of this church. Lord, I believe that you're going to do a great work. We thank you for your word and your spirit. I thank you for these sweet people. In Jesus' name, amen. I love every one of you. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. Pull off some of these items for Debbie's sake. All right.